You know, a technique that I love to fish in the spring of the year post spawn is deep cranking. Anybody that's kept up with me the last few years knows that that's one of my favorite ways to catch them. I've got a lot of confidence in doing it. It's something that I just I just like doing it. Um, it's it's one of those things you can catch a lot of fish on it. Um, but chunking and winding, you know, that's my thing. I like to get out and, and move a bait, throw in a big swim bait, big crank bait, that sort of stuff. But in the spring of the year when they're post spawn, Especially right now, water temperature is still like in the mid-60s. It hadn't even hit 70 degrees, so I'm not looking real far out yet. But there's a transition period, you know, when those fish are still a good number of fish spawning and there's a good number of fish that have already spawned that are on their way out, um, and they kind of disappear on you for a little while. And they're kind of, you're, you're scanning out there looking around and not seeing anything, but you know they're not, you're not catching them up shallow really good, so you know they're somewhere in between. And a couple places that I like to look for that bite is going to be at the mouths of the creeks, you know, on secondary points as they're, you know, places just transition banks where they're where they're coming and going, you know, where whether it's a rock transition, um, if it's got a point, especially a point, you know, when TVA is pulling a lot of water, you know, it creates a current break. You'll hear me talk about that a lot, especially here on this lake, is, you know, fish and current breaks, rock points, pea gravel points, stuff like that. And if the if you can catch them where they're generating a lot of water and they're pulling a lot of current, you know, it can be. I'm not saying you're going to catch them every single cast like you do when they move on out, but you, they'll load up. They'll start schooling up on places like that before they actually get out there and throwing a deep crankbait on those cloudy overcast days like you see we're out here today and it's cloudy and overcast. It's been drizzling rain, so conditions are perfect for it. And my, my setup's pretty simple. Uh, one thing that a lot of people don't realize on when you're throwing a deep crankbait, especially if you're wanting something that gets really, you know, that'll get your bait down there, is throwing a big long rod. This is the Daiwa Tatula Elite eight footer. Um, it's got that good parabolic bend to it. It's 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 a perfect rod for you know what I'm doing, throwing a big plug. This is the six cents cloud nine. This is the C10. And what I like to do when I'm fishing like that, a lot of times on cloudy conditions, overcast, those fish will get up shallow. So I want something that'll cover that you know, 10 foot or less, something that'll cover that 10 to 18, and then something that'll cover that 18 to 18 to 25, you know, because a lot of times those fish will be up shallow. Sometimes they'll be out there a little bit deeper, especially if you get those high bluebird skies, they'll tend to get out there in that little bit deeper water. And all depends on what the current's doing. So six cents, they've got a, they've got the, uh, the C25, C20, C15, and the C10. Actually, they've got four models that are perfect, you know, for covering all water depths when you're doing that so next time you're out you know try that try that uh, in the springtime post spawn when they're first you know first coming out and they're not out there really good yet and hopefully you'll put a few more fish in the boat six cents cloud nine c10 it's a good one